Some teaching, of course, changes evolutionary pathway and makes the population more adaptive. But on the other hand, evolution also creates better self-taught agents in the future. So that's why we see we, we can say this interaction between evolution and self-teaching in in many many worlds. This is first this is a very simple demonstration of my work. So you see initially that it's a self that evolved self that agents in the map B. So initially the agent cannot move with a full source, but over time there might have been some agents can very some agents can move to the full source. But over time the agent is get is getting more con conscious about this environment. What where to find the food to survive, and they know how to approach the food source and stay there and eat. Yeah. This is what I call, um, because you think about the, the sensory input I said, the, the data doesn't know anything about the environment. It doesn't know any, like the current position or the angle, it just how the, like we are placed in the forest. So it's what, what I call some sort of conscious intelligence emerges, and the agent is getting more conscious of some sort or some degree of intelligence is emerged. So for the conclusion, we see that evolution and self-teaching interact with each other to create more productive populations. I mean, here, I, I want to stress on uh, another paradigm of, of research, I think so. So uh, instead of for a solution to, to a problem, and, I, um, and, it's, and not learn to solve a problem as blankly, but here I want to stress on we evolve a learner better to solve a problem. And, and actually in my work it is self-taught learner. So we evolve a learner better to solve rather than evolve a solution for a problem. That's a paradigm I use here. So it's a very top level of, of paradigm. And so this actually in, in terms of engineering perspective, the technique proposed in my work can be useful in in, 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 in learning with or with less or with weak supervision signals like in unsupervised learning or in, in problems like one class learning or something like that. Actually, it can be also useful in reinforcement learning and game domain. Yeah. Um, so the, 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 the main, the, one of the dark signs of, of, the, of the current work is, in, in here I, I just evolved the ways of the neural networks. And so in the future, in the future work, it would be more interesting <coughs> to see how we can evolve both the web and the topology of the self-taught neural net networks. And on one thing, so uh, if we uh, approach this research from a philosophical perspective, uh, I think social learning or cultural learning can provide new insights uh, as uh, something like reinforcement signals can be learned from others. So it's kind of combining self-teaching and uh, some sort of supervision through social learning and cultural learning. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thank you for your presentation. Are there any questions? Uh, you say that the reward is evolved from uh, itself, mm -hmm. so there must be some kind of meta-objective from the point of view of the 